Okay, the SC715C from SV Bonnie Planetary Camera. What's in the box? And we got instruction manual. Very nice. Okay. Well, look, there's a few bits and pieces. Uh, ST4 guide cable for the old school guys. USB 3 high speed data cable to connect the camera or PC. And a microfiber wipe. And the camera itself. It's actually pretty hefty compared to the 705. It's slightly larger. Gotta get it out of the bag. And that lovely grey anodized finish. Bloody beautiful. And then there's a few different connections. That's for a quarter inch eyepiece. There's one to screw directly onto M54, I think, or M48. And an adapter so that it'll fit the little security camera lenses. As you can see, the 715 is actually larger than the 705, even though the 705 has the larger sensor and larger pixel size. And here's the direct comparison of the two sensors side by side. As you can see, the 715 has the UV IR cut window too. So the first test, because I can't wait for it to get dark, let's try it out on the moon on the C8 in the middle of the day. So here's a direct screen recording of SharpCap. Now, you can see here it doesn't actually register this camera as an SV Bonnie camera. It's coming up as a TubeTech camera. I'm sure that's something that I'll probably rectify in software later. Um, but there's also, if you get on their website, you can download the actual SV Bonnie capture software now. Um, so yeah, if you have a look now, we're not quite in focus, but first impression, obviously, the, <coughs> the Bayer Matrix on this thing is GRBG, so you've got twice the green pixels to the red and blue, hence the color cast. So the only issue I had in sharp cap, as you can see, I'm looking around for the white balance and shooting in RAW 8 and 12, you can't seem to adjust the color balance. It's not until you go to RGB 24 that I can adjust the color balance um, to obviously eliminate the green. Oh, there we go. So I've adjusted the white balance and obviously it's still reflecting a bit of orange because it is the middle of the day and there's a lot of sunlight bouncing off the moon. Um, but as you can see, the resolution's pretty good and that's at full resolution. The frame rate, I couldn't seem to get it above about 23, 24 frames per second. Um, until I went into the actual SV Bonnie software and then you can get it upwards of sort of 80. Um, but yeah, like I said, with SharpCap, I think there might be a software issue because it's not actually registering as an SV Bonnie camera. It's coming up as a TubeTech camera or um, you can put the ASCOM driver on and run it that way, but it seems to have a bit of a delayed response to it. So.
But as you can see, as we pan around the moon, there's plenty of detail there. Considering the scene's not fantastic, it is the middle of the day, I'm shooting over house roofs, so there's probably a fair bit of an atmospheric dispersion, plus the moon's not super high in the sky, and it is a fairly warm day. Um, but you can still see sharp details. So I'm gonna take a quick, quick video and save it as a surf file and then I'll show you the process results after it's been through PIP, Auto Stack It and Registax. Not bad for a 30 second video in the middle of the day um, and it's on the Celestron C8 but it's not at its native focal length. I've got the 0.63 reducer on there so we're running at about 1280 millimeters. So next up, while it's still daylight, I'm going to stick it under the Solar Scout, the Daystar Solar Scout 60, and here we are, we're shooting in full colour. Um, and as you can see, there's a fair bit of detail, and obviously being the size of the sensor, it's fairly significantly cropped in even at its full resolution, um, which is really nice, so you can get a lot of detail on the surface of the sun. Okay, so for the next test, I'm going to point it at full native focal on the C8, so 2032 millimeters at M16, the Eagle Nebula, and see if we can get the pillars of creation. Here's the Nina capture. Please don't pay attention to the fact that the stars on the edges are a bit blown out. That's just part and parcel of the old C8. Um, but I'll show you the final stack result and you can see an idea of what can be done using PixInsight, where exterminate, all that sort of stuff. I think it's still a fairly good image considering. And for the final test, I'm going to run at native focal length on the SV555, 243mm. Uh, to get a wild field view of the M16 or the Eagle Nebula, just to give you a direct comparison. Um, sort of one extreme to the next wide field into very, very close up. And it is surprising on a wide field lens like this, just how zoomed in it is because of the small pixel size and the small sensor size on this camera.
So overall, I think it's a fantastic camera, especially for the price. Um, when this video comes out, I think at the moment on SV Bonnie's website, so direct from them, it's 349, so 350 Australian dollars. Um, the one thing I haven't had a chance to do is test it for planetary, believe it or not. That's the one thing that this camera was designed for. So first chance I get, that'll be the next thing I do. At the moment we've got absolutely horrendous weather and it's not looking any better for probably the next week or two. Um, but yeah, first chance I get, I'll test it on planetary and try it with a few different filters and things like that. Um, but other than that, let me know what you think in the comments and obviously like, share, subscribe, do your thing. Thanks for watching.